Welcome back to Late Night Football. Today, I have my final 2024 mock draft for the entire first round. We're going to go pick by pick. And guys, I got four realistic draft day trades for you guys. And they're pretty spicy. I ain't going to lie to you. And I'm not going to waste no time. So, number one overall, we know who it's going to be. It's Caleb Williams. We're not wasting any time. Now, number two, the Washington Commanders are on the clock. Let's do this thing. This is where the draft starts. Drake May, I think, is the correct selection. But today... I am predicting what is going to actually happen on draft day. Contrary to my 32 other videos I just made for every single team on their mock draft, Cliff Kingsbury, I bet, is pulling for Jaden Daniels. Okay? It just it makes sense. It's the system he likes to run. He likes more mobile QB. May can run, though, too. Let's not ignore that. He can't run quite like Daniels. Daniels is freakishly elusive. I think it's going to be Jaden Daniels at the end of the day. He just belongs in the team. It fits the scheme more. It's the rumors coming out of camp. I think Daniels goes two overall. Now, three. This is where one of the trades come in. Hope you're ready. I believe that the Vikings hubbub about McCarthy, I think McCarthy's a good player. I, good, key word. I think, he's a good, I think he's a good player. Hasn't had as many chances to show it as the other QBs. He's got talent, though, for sure. But I'm not going to put my neck out there and my career on the line for J.J. McCarthy. But for Drake May, the Minnesota Vikings – would definitely do that. He fits their scheme. He's got a ton of arm talent. He's pretty mobile as well. I think the Vikings, I, yeah, you heard me, are coming all the way up from 11. Where are they at? There's Minnesota. Giving 11, 23, and probably some more. I don't know what the exact trade will be, so we're just going to do 11 and 23 because that's all that pertains to today's draft. 4-3. They're coming up to get this guy. We're forcing the trade. The Vikings are coming to get the man, the myth, the legend, Drake May, and this will send shockwaves around the league. The NFC North is just an absolute powerhouse with Caleb, May, Goff, and, of course, Jordan Love. Look at all those young QBs doing their thing. Goff became the old man just like that. What a crazy world we live in. Four, this is going to be uh, this is gonna be Marvin. <laughs> We're not even going to talk about that long. Marvin Harris Jr. is such a phenomenal prospect. You've heard it, yada, yada, yada. Let's just take the pick right here. We know who it's going to be. Next on the clock, what are we doing at five? I think the Chargers are now being centralized around the Jim Harbaugh ideology, which is smash mouth football. And it works. He just won a national championship. Why would he switch it up now? They know, everybody in God knows, they need a wide receiver more than anybody. But that's not quite what they do in the Jim Harbaugh era. I hope you know that. The guy I think they're eyeing, Joe Alt would be sick. They already have a left tackle in Slater, but a right tackle. What about a smash mouth? Ty Lee's Fuaga, the right tackle out of Oregon State. This guy is smash mouth football, the definition of it, and I think this is who the Chargers want. With that being said, there is a team that needs a left tackle so, so bad. They need to shore up that edge on the O-line because their quarterback is a little bit older, a little bit is an understatement, and we found out last year, everyone told them, we're like, guys, your O-line is doo-doo. You're going to get your QB hurt, and it happened. Very unfortunate. We don't like to see it, but I think they fixed that today. They realize they have an issue, and they're going to fix it. They're going to address it. The Jets are coming up to five, but force the trade. Let's make it happen. Jets are on the clock, and you know who they're getting. The Jets are getting Joe Alt. This is a win-win for both teams. The Chargers will most likely get the tackle they want, the right tackle they need, and you're protecting Aaron Rodgers in a great, fantastic, surefire prospect in Joe Walt. This dude is phenomenal. 6'8", good God. Rodgers, he's feeling good. He's feeling happy. He's got time to throw the football. Giants are on the clock. Giants, they need weapons. This is the worst wide receiver room, in my opinion, in the entire league. It's ridiculous down there. And we're going to fix that. Maybe besides the Patriots, we're going to fix that. And Malik Neighbors, quite a great prospect. He's going to the Giants. Now, the Titans are on the clock. Titans fans, I feel for you guys. Because the whole year it's been like, we want Joe Wall. Or not we want Joe Wall, but like, that's all you've gotten in mock drafts. Because he's such a good player. And y'all need him. Well, today we're going to switch it up. Romo Dunze, you also need wide receiver talent. We know that for a fact. Romo Dunze, such a good prospect. Like I've mentioned about all these other guys. Romo Dunze... And DeAndre Hopkins, he can learn from Hopkins. I think Odunze is going to be just fine in the league. But now that he's got a mentor like that in DeAndre Hopkins, that will be phenomenal for this team. Now, your boy, Banana Rama, Will Levis, has got two stud outside options for this team. Odunze, welcome to the Titans. So, Atlanta's on the clock. Atlanta's in one of the coolest positions I've ever seen in a draft. And by that I mean, you never have seven offensive players go off the board before one defensive player. Do you understand how rare that is in a draft? They get their pick of the litter 
for whatever defensive player they want to put on their roster. And I think the thing they need in the guy with the most upside, in my opinion, of course, Quinnon Mitchell. Lengthy, fast, can cover off the ball, on the ball, just a playmaker all around. He killed the senior bowl. He made so much money that day. And it's going to reflect on draft night where he goes eight overall to the Atlanta Falcons. Quinnon, you are a Falcon. Now, the Bears are on the clock. The Bears... Such a good spot in this draft. They get their quarterback in Caleb Williams. So nice. Now they pick at nine. They kind of wanted Odunze. They kind of wanted neighbors. That's all right. It's okay. You already got plenty of wideouts there. You're going to be just fine. You got DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. You're going to be just fine. Don't even worry about it. And I'm sure they knew that, and that's why they made the move for Keenan in the first place. Here you are on the board. You need defensive line. We have to address that position. The O-line's looking better for sure. What do we get here? I think you go Dallas Turner, the edge prospect. He's so talented. You need him. He's got a high ceiling. Let's make it happen. He can rush the passer like nobody else. Welcome, you are Chicago Bears. So, Chargers on the clock. Chargers, win-win scenario. Harbaugh gets more capital, and, and, you know, you get the tackle prospect you wanted all along. This is your new right tackle. This guy, Chargers fans, trust me when I say this, you are going to love Fuaga, and he's going to set the tone on that offense. Welcome to the team. You are a Charger. Now, the Patriots are on the clock. They traded all the way back from three, and they got 11, 23, and some more, I'm sure. But today, we're just doing 11 and 23 because it's just the first round. Who are they taking here? I think this, this right here is where they take their guy. This is appropriate for JJ. JJ's got a high ceiling and tons of potential. He's the unknown guy. Every draft's got an unknown guy. What can he be? What can he do? I can mold him into something special. JJ in the Patriots organization just makes sense. This is a good spot to snag him. Not trading up for him way in here, and hopefully they can get some support at 23 as well. JJ, you are a Patriot. Now, Broncos are on the clock. This is where stuff starts to get shaky. Is Sean Payton patient enough to get a quarterback in the second round or wait till next year to get a QB? I don't think so. Sean Payton is not a very patient man. He's going to get what he wants. I strongly believe that Bo Nix and Sean Payton is a match made in heaven. Accurate, makes good decisions. He sticks to the game script, which is what he wants. And of course, he's coachable. He's been through tons of programs. I think Bo Nix meshes really well with the Broncos, and he's going to head to 12 overall on that board. Here we are, 13. This is where the O-line run begins. Olu. You've been on the board too long. You're such a good player. The tackle out of Penn State. This guy's got so much potential, as we know. He's such a good player. Welcome to the team. You are a Raider. Saints are on the clock. I don't think the Saints waste any time. Of course, look at these Look at these prospects. Let's take a scan. we got Latu, Dejean, Bowers, Newton, Murphy, Arnold. Some really good players right here. They can go a lot of different ways. I think the guy they need and the guy they want is going to be J.C. Latham. they got to shrub that tackle position. It is a need, not, not a want. It is an absolute need by this point. They're not even going to waste any time. They're going to take this guy right off the board. And now here go the Colts at 15 overall. I think the Colts have not really been highlighted to take this guy, but over time it appears it just makes sense. Cooper DeGene, when we started this draft process, let me show you. When we started this process in uh, right here, Right around uh, January, he's getting picked super high, and he's just falling off. And I don't quite understand why. Maybe he didn't test as good as others. I thought he tested just fine. But point is, he fits in their scheme so, so well. Cooper DeGene is just such a good player, and he's going to mesh perfectly with this Colts defensive philosophy. Welcome, Cooper DeGene. You're on the Colts. Let's do this thing. Who's going next for this squad? The Seahawks need some help. They, they got like they got talent, you know. They kind of got a quarterback in Geno Smith. He had a great year in 2022, I believe. Yeah, two years ago. Great year in 2022. What do they do here, though? I think they're going to lean. Troy, it says he's a tackle. He's not a tackle. He's more of a guard, and they need one badly. He is such a good player. Get him on the roster. They need him big time. He is going to the Seahawks. 17 overall. There are tons of options here, but I think they're going to realize they have to protect their quarterback. They cannot let Lawrence keep getting smacked like this. It's not fair to him. It's just not right. And Graham Barton, this guy also, they say he's a tackle. He might have played tackle in college. I don't. I think he did. But he's going to be a center or a guard in the NFL, and he is what they need. they got to protect their dude. they got to protect their quarterback. Don't waste any time. Take this player right off the board. Get a good center. Get a good guard. Graham Barton is the answer in Jacksonville. So, Bengals are on the clock, and this is dream scenario. Brock Bowers, one of the most talented tight ends in the past decade. He slides because he's a tight end, and no one likes to draft tight ends in the top 10. I get it. You know what I mean? It's not a position of absolute need like corner, defensive line, wide out, or quarterback, or a tackle. But he is such a good player, and they need a tight end badly. Him and Joe Burrow, Bowers and Burrow, 
a combo for years to come. Rams are on the clock. Who do the Rams take here, man? The Rams, do they protect John Matthew Stafford? Because we know Stafford's got injury issues. They've lingered for a long time. Or do you take one of these killer prospects in Jared Verse, Latu on the board? Because let's look at tackle. Let me show you what we're looking like. If we go to tackle, it's Mims. Mims is a solid prospect. Let's not pretend he's not. Mims is a very solid prospect. I think, though, I don't know. Yeah, we're protecting Stafford. If you give Stafford time, you know he cooks. I know Verse is such a good player. I just think they value keeping Stafford on his own two feet more than getting a studied lineman. I know they just lost Aaron Donald. But this whole franchise is based around Sean McVay. He's going to get what he needs to make his stuff happen, to make his genius work. And you need a tackle to protect your quarterback in Stafford. Mims, welcome to the squad. Pittsburgh is on the clock, and they're going to waste no time. Arnold's on the board. They need him bad. Welcome, buddy. You're on the squad. Dolphins on the clock. What are they doing right here? They need defensive interior. They need O-line. O-line has gotten ran through. Let me show you. Tackle, tackle, guard slash center, guard slash center, tackle. Five picks just like that in the past eight-something picks. Absolutely ridiculous. O-line got ran through. The prospects they want are not quite there. You're not taking another tight end here in the first. We know that for a fact. So interior is the way to go. Byron Murphy or Newton, both great players. Let's go Murphy right here. Just calling my shot. Let's say Byron goes to the Dolphins. Eagles are on the clock. The Eagles, they say they need a wideout. Don't quite believe that. Contracts might make sense for that kind of need, but not. we don't need it yet. They need a DB. We know that for a fact. They absolutely need a DB on this defense. And they're going to take Nate Wiggins out of Clemson. The dude, he gets hurt a lot, but he's got tons of potential, and that's the swing you got to take when you're in the back of the first round. Patriots are on the clock. Guys, this is my next trade. You're like, Kate, we said four trades. Where they've been? We've had two so far, I'm pretty sure. This is the next one. I hope you're ready. The Patriots, as we know, cannot draft a wideout to save their life. Death beam pointed at Earth by the Martians. Can the Patriots draft wide receiver? No, they cannot. So what are they going to do? They got a ton of cap space. Let me show you. Let me pull this up. I got you guys. This, sorry for the, all the ads. Patriots, top. Patriots, top. Patriots, where you at? Top, 2027, and top. They got money for days. They have the capital. Stop taking swings. You know you can't draft them. You know you can't. So what are we going to do? So the Patriots are calling up our boys in Cincinnati who cannot pay both Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. They just can't do it. They're going to pay Chase. They're not going to pay Higgins. They're trying to move off Higgins. We know this for a fact. I think this is where they make their move. They're sending 23, and we're getting T. Higgins. What a move for this squad. A win-win absolute scenario for both teams. Guess who's on the clock? The Bengals are back on the clock. You're like, Cade, who do the Bengals want that they just ship off T. Higgins like that? One, T. Higgins, last year of his contract. This may be a one-year rental for the Patriots. Who knows? One year is a short lifespan to think about in the grand scheme of things. Two, they just lost DJ Reader. And if Newton is on the board at 23, you waste no time and go get this guy. He can get stuff done in the middle of your defense, and it is for sure a need on this team. They're going to save a bunch of money and fill a huge need they just lost in DJ Reader. What a win-win for both teams right there. Look at that trade. I know you love that, guys. I got one or two more for you guys, I think. One or two more. Let's see how this goes. Cowboys are on the clock. Cowboys, Brian Thomas Jr., one hell of a prospect. We know that. Running back, I think they like Jonathan Brooks a lot. They're not going to do that in the first round. That's pick 56 overall if they do pick him. Tackle, center, that is the glaring need. We know that, and I really think they're not going to waste any time. The best Cowboys years, in my opinion, at least in my lifetime, when they hit the Great Wall at Dallas in 2014, 2015, that team was always in contention, always competitive, always great. They need a center. They need a tackle. The tackle prospects here aren't elite, but Jax Powers Johnson is elite in my opinion. This guy's got so much talent. He's such a good player, and he can just – look at that. He was a wrestler back in the day. Powers Johnson generates a ton of power there in the middle of the O-line, and they for sure need him. You are a cowboy. Build the O-line. The Great Wall at Dallas. Now, here comes the next trade. Are you ready? I don't think you are. Green Bay's on the clock. A young, talented team in a hard division that wants to add more young talent. What do they do right here? O-line. That's their biggest need, without a doubt. They just lost their left tackle. It's gotten pretty ran through. The, the, like, our old line run was ridiculous these past 10 picks. You're not going to get the guy you really dreamed of at 25. But, guys, who is calling on the phones? There's a team that has whiffed and whiffed and whiffed on draft prospects for wide receivers, just like the Patriots. No, maybe not as bad as the Patriots. <laughs> Let's get that straight. But, man, they are sick and tired of having their GOAT, soon-to-be GOAT quarterback, 
just not have the guy they need. The Kansas City Chiefs want this man, such a good player. Let's go get our prospect in Brian Thomas Jr. You are a Chief in I'm terrified. The league's terrified. We are all shaking. Patrick Mahomes has his brand new weapon in Brian Thomas Jr., and they're going to be nothing short of unstoppable next year. Guys, it is time. Our two edge prospects have slid far enough in this draft. This year, this year the priority was clearly O-line and protecting our new quarterbacks, and this is where it ends. Latu and Verse are too good of players to not go here. I think the Bucks are going to select, let's go with Jared Verse right here. Great player. Such a stud right there. And then the Cardinals are going to snag Latu. What a snag. Latu and Verse at 26 and 27. Just the steals of the draft, in my opinion. Now, here are the Bills on the clock. What do they want to do? We know what they want to do. Adonai Mitchell, this dude, the ceiling, you can't even see my hand. It's through the roof. The ceiling for Donnie Mitchell's through the roof. He's got some, how do I call it, effort issues. And they're real. They're very concerning. Some plays he just completely takes off. Some plays he's all in. You never quite know with this guy. But the talent is through the roof. If the Bills can get a hold of this guy and just have him buy in and do his thing, they are going to kill it. And they just lost Diggs. And they need a new wideout. Let's get one for Josh Allen. The Lions are on the clock. The Detroit Lions. What do they want to do right here? This is my team, if y'all don't know. If you didn't know, you know now. Somehow, Kool-Aid McKinstry has slid all the way to us, and we have been interviewing him a bunch, and if this happens on draft day, you're going to see Brad Holmes banging the desk again because he is fired up. We need a corner. We got a corner. Welcome to the squad. You are Detroit Lion. Baltimore on the clock. Baltimore's got options. Troy Franklin, I don't love him like most do. He's a little light. It's pushed pretty well, but there's a wideout I am a big fan of for this team. What about a guy that just gets open and catches the football consistently? I would love to pair that wide receiver with my long-term answer at quarterback. Lad McConkey does exactly that. Not only does he get open consistently and catch the ball consistently, he is explosive. He tested extremely well at the combine, and this is an athlete. This is a great player, not sneaky athletic. This dude is a real athlete. Lad McConkey, you're going to be a Baltimore Raven. Two picks left on the clock. What do we want to do here? I think the 49ers need to finally readdress that their O-line is kind of falling apart. It's about that time, and the answer right here is going to be Tyler Guyton, the massive 6'7 tackle out of Oklahoma. They need him bad. Let's throw him on the right side opposite of Trent Williams. Last pick, and it's the Packers. Don't love the Packers as a team, obviously, because I'm a Lions fan, but I got massive respect for them. What do they do right here? They want the guy they wanted at 25. Zach Frazier is going to help this O-line out a ton. He can move from guard to center. He can't do tackle. He's not tall enough for that. He's only 6'3", not long enough. But he is nonetheless a huge improvement for this team across the board in the O-line. Guys, this is my final mock draft of 2024. This is what I think is going to happen on draft day. Let's review. Caleb at 1, Jaden Daniels at 2. The Vikings come all the way up from 11 to get their guy at 3 overall. Marvin at 4. The Jets say enough is enough. You can't have Rodgers keep getting hurt. Joe Alt, we need you badly. They go and get their guy at five overall. What a steal right there for that team. I love the direction of that for their O-line. Malik Neighbors at six. Romo Dunze at seven. Quinion Mitchell at eight. Dallas Turner at nine. At ten, the Chargers trade back and get their desired tackle, Tylese, the tone setter, Fuaga. The right tackle they need, the answer long-term for this squad. Eleven, guess who snipes J.J. McCarthy from trading back all the way from three? The Patriots. It just makes sense. It checks out. Next, we got Bonex at 12. I think it'll be a very nice mesh with Sean Payton. Olu at 13. JC at 14. Cooper DeGene just fits the defensive system well at 15. Troy Fatanu all the way at 16. At 17, we were protecting our quarterback at all costs. 18, woo-wee. Bowers and Burrow for years to come. What a combo right there. Bowers, Burrow, Chase, get out the way. I don't even want to think about it. That's a nightmare scenario for a defense. Next, protect your quarterback in John Matthew Stafford. Make sure your man, McVay, can get the stuff done he wants to and has time in the pocket so he can scheme up things how he wants. Next, Arnold at 20 overall. They need a quarterback bad. Byron Murphy, Nate Wiggins at 23 overall. You can't see it. This was the Patriots pick, okay? And they traded the Bengals for guess who? T. Higgins, because they cannot draft the wideout to save their life or develop one. T. Higgins, you know he's a great player, and you got the money to pay him. Pay this man a bag for your new quarterback in J.J. McCarthy and give the Bengals 23 overall, and they're going to get Newton to replace D.J. Reader. That's called a win-win right there, and that is a scenario I hope it plays out on draft day because, man, I'm, I'm killing it here. I'm killing it with these trades, guys. Next, 24 overall, the Cowboys. 
the Great Wall of Dallas. Bring it back, baby. They for sure need it. Jackson, Powers, Johnson, you're going to be a center for the Dallas Cowboys. Brian Thomas Jr. is on the board at 25, and the Chiefs are done wasting time. They're not doing Sky Moore. They're not doing Rasheed Rice. They're not doing Kadarius Toney. We've had enough of these wideouts not being their full potential. Brian Thomas Jr. is the answer in KC. He will be such a good player for this squad, and Patrick Mahomes and him are going to be best friends for years to come. They're going to get their guy all the way from 32. 26 overall, these two prospects fell far enough. Stills of the draft right here, Jared and Latu go back-to-back at 26 and 27. A Donnie Mitchell to the Bills, what a fit right there. His ceiling is through the roof as well. Next, the Lions get Kool-Aid McKinstry, the guy they wanted all along. Ladd McConkey. 30 overall to the Baltimore Ravens. Tyler Guyton to protect their quarterback in Brock Purdy at 31. And then finally, Zach Frazier, Green Bay, traded back from 25. The guy that won it at 25, they got at 32. That is called a win and winning the draft. Guys, this is my final mock draft for 2024. This is what I think is going to happen on draft day. Which trade did you like the most? Which trade did you like the least? Comment it all down below. If you guys watch this video all the way to the end, please drop a like. It helps me out tremendously because it just boosts the algorithm and lets them know that you enjoyed watching this video. It seems pretty simple, but man, it goes farther than you can imagine. If y'all enjoyed this video today, I've made four tier lists, QB, wide receiver, tight end, and running back. Go subscribe down below. I'll link those videos right here for you guys. You can go check those out right now. Thank you guys for spending your time with me, not only on this mock draft, but throughout the entire draft process. This has been the best three months of this channel's life. So much growth, so much love. I appreciate y'all more than you know. Seriously, been the best time making content for y'all. Love y'all big time. Take it easy. Peace. Now listen up, y'all. It is time for the 2024 NFL Draft Wide Receiver Tier List. And this is the first time I have ever had, I mean ever, had two players in my God Tier. Let's get it started. Introducing my two players in my God Tier. Y'all know their names. Say it with me. Marvin Harrison Jr. out of OSU. And Malik Neighbors out of LA.